Ah, the 90s. When the Spice Girls reigned supreme, Donald Trump was a kindred spirit showing kids to the hotel lobby and there were only 150 Pokemon. Yes, times were so much simpler back then. And speaking of Pokemon, remember the original animated series? I wanna be the very best Like no one ever was To catch them is my real test To frame them is my co- Oh, that's right, we were filming. Sorry, uh, we just can't help ourselves when it comes to one of the most iconic cartoon theme songs of the 1990s. The phenomenon of Pokemon, or a pocket monsters, as they're known in Japan, changed the course of pop culture history. So, that by the beginning of the 21st century, everyone, even adults, knew what a Pikachu was. Gotta catch a Pokemon. Everything started with the release of Pokemon Red and Green for the Game Boy in Japan in 1996. The games made their way to the US as Pokemon Red and Blue two years later, but by that time, the popularity of the series had already grown to the point that risque gag mangas, a trading card game, and an anime series were prevalent in Japan. All of this would eventually make its way to America before the new millennium. Aside from the video games and trading cards, Pokemon fame grew exponentially thanks to the American English dubbed adaptation of the Japanese anime series that opened with the addicting theme song I just sang so beautifully before. Lighthearted, funny, sometimes really, really sad, and nostalgic as in equal measure, the Pokemon animated series was a beautifully made show which enthralled young kids and led them to buy more merchandise. Genius. And sure, they could have given us a crappy show, but every episode, and there were a lot of them, was crafted with care. The English dubs were courtesy of the production company known as 4Kids Entertainment. The first Americanized episode, Pokemon I Choose You, premiered on September 8th, 1998, less than a year after the show debuted in Japan and almost a month before the games were released in America. In the US, it aired on first-run syndication for two months, which just means it didn't air on any one network. By 1999, it found a permanent home on Kids WB. This first episode introduced the young Pokemon trainer to be Ash Ketchum from Pallet Town, who wants to become a Pokemon master by catching all 150 Pokemon. If his surname didn't give you any indication of his character motivation, uh, then nothing. When he turns 10, Ash is allowed to get his Pokemon license and receive a starter Pokemon from his town's Pokemon expert, Professor Oak. Right off the bat, the logic was a bit strange as 10-year-old kids are given a super-powered animal and allowed to roam the country on their own, pick a fight with other kids and adults. It really gives credence to the popular theory that Pokemon is set in a world where most of the dads were killed off in a great war. Unfortunately, Ash oversleeps and, instead of getting a Bulbasaur, Charmander, or Squirtle, gets stubborn and petulant Pikachu, ah, got you, the electric mouse Pokemon. The show's creators were originally going to give Ash a Clefairy as his starter, but finally settled on Pikachu to make the series appealing to both girls and boys. The decision paid off as Pikachu has become the Mickey Mouse-like mascot of the entire franchise. Fun fact, Pikachu is a combination of two Japanese onomatopoeias. Pika is the noise an electric spark makes, while Chu is the noise a mouse makes. Bye, Pikachu. Ash's journey gets off to a rocky start, but after saving an injured Pikachu from a pack of Spearows, the two begin to trust each other and a legendary partnership begins to take shape. When Ash first came on the scene, the number of Pokemon was a bit more manageable at 150. If you grew up watching the American series, you may know all 150 by heart, thanks to the original Pokerap. Which would air with certain episodes. It's also arguably one of the best and catchiest RNB songs of the 1990s. Bubble Star Commander, Golden Pikachu!
John Siegler of Four Kids was the producer on the song and wrote the lyrics and melody with Rave Music CEO John Loeffler. The late Baby Floyd, a former backup singer for Billy Joel and Nina Simone, did the rapping. R&B singer James D. Train Williams was responsible for singing the hook. Another fun little part of the American animated series was the Who's That Pokemon bumper in between commercial breaks. The viewer at home would see the dark outline of a certain Pokemon and would have to guess which one it was before the reveal at the end of the commercial break. It's Ghastly! Ghastly! You might know it from this now famous vine. Who's that Pokemon? It's Pikachu! It's Clefairy! Fuck! During the show, Ash would fight against gym leaders, expert Pokemon trainers who, if beaten, would present him with a badge that would bolster his reputation and allow him to face off against the greatest trainers in the region, the Elite Four. Two gym leaders end up joining Ash and Pikachu. One is Misty, a trainer of water type Pokemon and the leader of the Cerulean Gym. Admit it, you fell pretty hard for that yellow shirt and those red suspenders, didn't you? The other is Brock, a rock type trainer and former leader of the Pewter Gym. In hindsight, He's sort of a creep who falls in love with every pretty girl he sees and is only brought to his senses when Misty tugs him away by the ear. While he often fell head over heels for female trainers, Brock was usually smitten by the Nurse Joys and Officer Jennies of the Kanto region. A running gag of the show was that there were multiple Joys and Jennies throughout the region who were all identical and related with one another. All the while, they're pursued by the nefarious Team Rocket, an evil organization whose sole purpose is to steal rare and powerful Pokemon from their trainers. Luckily for Ash, Brock, and Misty, the Team Rocket members who follow them around are the most inept villains in the history of villainy. Jesse James and their English-speaking Meow, who must have grown up in Brooklyn based on his accent. I'm pretty sure that battle factory's right around here somewhere, and you can bet it'll be crawling with grade A Pokemon too. You probably know them from their introductory motto, prepare for trouble and make, make it, it double. double. To protect the world from devastation, to unite all peoples within our nation, to denounce the evils of truth and love, to extend our reach to the stars above. Jesse James. Team Rocket blasts off the speed of light. Surrender now or prepare to fight. Meow. That's right. The trio recited this so many times throughout the show that in later episodes, the main characters either interrupted or imitated them in order to disrupt the monotony. Prepare for trouble. And you can make that trouble. To protect the world from devastation. To ignite all peoples within our nation. My Pokemon team is faster than light. Surrender now or prepare to fight all of us. The team would often show up with some large and intricate Pokemon capturing machine which would eventually blow up and send them flying off into the distance. Like a defeated character in Super Smash Brothers, they'd scream, looks like Team Rocket's blasting off again. I actually got that one pretty good. Before becoming a blinking flash on the horizon. Speaking of James and Jesse, what was their deal anyway? The TV show never specified their relationship status, but to be fair, this was the era before Facebook. In the manga, the two get married and Jesse gets pregnant. I'm surprised it wasn't James got pregnant. I mean, it's manga. Anyway, the couple's arch rivals are Cassidy and Butch, a Team Rocket duo who are much better at their jobs than Jesse and James. Despite their differences, all four of them have something in common. They were named after two Western outlaws Jesse James and Butch Cassidy. But not all was fun and games for the show. In 1997, 700 Japanese children suffered seizures from the episode Electric Soldier Horigon due to the flashing lights and the strobe effects in the animation. While the offending animation was retooled and slowed down for a planned American release, the episode never made it to the States and Electric Soldier Porygon remains an infamous lost episode. To take its place, Pikachu's Goodbye was added to production 
and is one of the show's saddest episodes. In it, Ash allows Pikachu to join a group of wild Pikachus, leading to an emotional parting. With Pokemon around to this day, there is no doubt that its heyday was in the late 90s and early 2000s when the show and cards were at the height of coolness. The closest we got to the original Pokemon craze was in the summer of 2016 when Pokemon Go made its debut. Even with all its silliness and humor, the animated series was a labor of love and an epic saga about friendship, responsibility, loyalty, and decency that made us want to cuddle up with our Pikachu at night. This is my Pikachu. Yes, all from a kid's show, so put that in your Pokeball and smoke it. Now, excuse me, I think there's a Capitops outside in this room? I gotta go catch them all. Excuse me. I was on a box, I'm small. Bye. <laughs>